Yeehaw! The flat is back! And we're off to Lincoln for the Doncaster Handicap. Yeehaw! The flat is back! And we're off to Donny for the Lincoln Handicap. Right, that's enough with the hoopla. And on with the show. Uh, I want to show you a couple of things about how I um, narrow down a big field handicap like the Lincoln. Um, I use two tools. The first one is Horse Race Base, an excellent website at horseracebase.com. Um, and they have uh, a major races, a big race trends tool, which is very useful. And it runs back to 1997 in their database. Um, so the first thing I do is click find the race I'm looking for, in this case the Lincoln, click the Profiler tab and they've got a handy breakdown of various uh, various um, variables by parameter. So um, for instance stall which is fairly unilluminating, um, previous place um, as you might expect most of the winners um, ran well last time um, more interestingly, perhaps, is um, those who didn't run well last time. Um, if we look at the profit and loss column, we can see that um, although you wouldn't back that many winners, if you could find a reason to overlook a seemingly bad run last time, you'd probably come out in front. Um, that's not an approach I'm going to use here, but um, I just want to just it's a, it's a good way to highlight the folly sometimes. Of, of going um, with percentages, win percentages, when um, the number of runners don't actually support it. So in this case, these these winners who were um, who were unplaced last time out uh, actually come from a very small, relatively number of uh, races collectively. Um, here's an interesting one: horse age. We can see that. Um, although the vast majority of runners are aged four, five, or six, they they collectively um, house all bar one of the last seventeen winners, um, and the significant majority of the placed horses as well. So, I'm probably going to narrow my search down to horses between four and six in age. Um, just having a quick look at the weight, we can see that. Um, very low weight and very high weight um, have tended to struggle uh, but the mid range sort of between 8-4 eight, eight, and 9-4 um, or 5 has got a very even distribution um, of winners and placed horses as well um, and again that's, that's a, a logical area to focus on although it probably covers the vast majority of the field um, looking at official rating, which is kind of related to to weight in one way, um, we can see that the large majority of winners were rated between um, 89 and 98. Um, again, three have won from uh, higher ratings and therefore carrying more weight, um, but the, the the percentage call is 89 to 98. Um, we can see the favourites done pretty well actually, won 6 of 19 runs, it's quite interesting. Uh, but there is, as you'd expect, a, a reasonable spread down the lists, uh, the bookie lists. Um, and for such a first day of the season handicap, it's no surprise to see that um, quite a lot uh, are having their first run of the season. In fact, what, what might be quite surprising is that um, <clears throat> only four winners uh, had run since the previous season um, so maybe we want to focus on a horse having their first run of the season uh, not much else that I really want to focus on there but the keys I would take out of a cursory look at this is that I'm looking probably for a four to six year old rated um, somewhere between um, high 80s and high 90s and probably having their first run of the season so with that in mind, let's head over to ggs.co.uk and I'm on the race cards um, and specifically I'm on the Lincoln race card. Um, now there's all sorts of things that, that can help you to, uh, to isolate a winner on here. Um, I'm going to only focus on a couple of those. 
uh, the first one is I want to look at um, the race analysis tab and on this tab I can see each horse in the race I can see their performance against the um, projected going which is soft in class 2 races um, on the course, the Doncaster course, over the distance of a mile and in a big field of 16 plus. Um, at the end I can also see their rating today, T, their last winning rating, L, and the difference between the two. Um, that might instruct a bet later on. So um, the first thing to do is uh, have a sort around. So if I sort by going, we can see that Tullius uh, has won two of the three times he's run on soft ground, uh, one of the two times he's run in this grade, and five of the eleven races over a mile that he's run in. That's that's in the context of a race like this. That's quite impressive. If we change it, the view to the place view, um, and again sort by going. Um, Captain Cat unfortunately is a non-runner on account of the ground, which I find curious given that um, he's placed in both his soft ground runs. Um, and and conditions looked fairly well set. I suspect there might be something else wrong with Captain Cat rather than just the ground, but that's conjecture on my part. Could be completely wrong. Um, we can see that of the more exposed horses, Spars Dancers run 23 times over a mile. He's been in the frame more than half of those, um, and um, he's got no problem with the ground either, um, and has got form in the grade. So. 20 to 1, he might be interesting. Again, our old friend Tullius appears up here. His place record uh, at the mile trip is impressive. Um, and there's a few more that might be of interest. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to highlight, this being a flat handicap, a big field flat handicap, is um, it's really the first opportunity that I've had to showcase the, um, <clears throat> the pace tool and how it can be used in a big field um, handicap. So there, there, there are two things that, that we really want to know. First of all, we want to know um, who are the pace horses in the race overall. And we can do that by sorting by the pace score or pace percentage. To remind you, um, these letters here stand for LI's last run, 2LI's second last run, and so on to 4LI, which is fourth last run. Um, each score is graded 1 to 4 based on um, how the horse ran in the early part of its of its races. So, um, for instance, with Chucky Royale, uh, a three relates to a prominent run, but not leading. So, um, we can see that he was soon tracking the leaders. Um, a one relates to a held up run, uh, slowly into stride. Um, a four means he led, pulled hard with leader. Um, and let's find a two. A two means that we're in touch or mid division um, uh, or midfield, as we can see with um, high there here. So uh, it's possible for a horse to score anything between four and 16 if they've got four completed runs in here. Um, and if we sort by pace score, we can see that the, um, the habitual front runners are Balti Boys. Unsinkable and to a lesser degree, Gabriel's Kaka, Spars Dancer, Robert the Painter, and Off Art. Um, now, it doesn't necessarily follow that, that in the Lincoln they will adopt that uh, pace position, um, but we, we, the, the best way to predict the future is to use the past, and this is the information we have. So, um, working on that basis, we can see that the, the race isn't it's not overloaded with pace. Um, there's plenty of hold up horses down here um, but there is there is enough pace for it to be a true run affair um, so that's interesting in and of itself but but more interesting is if we sort by draw we can get a feel for where the pace is um, as the horses come out of the stalls so for instance th this is now sorted in draw order 1 to 22 and we can see that if we look at the kind of the bottom uh, seven or eight in the stalls, we can see that there isn't a massive amount of pace there. Um, so it might be that as a consequence of that, the low drawn horses are slightly unfavoured because um, 
that, that there's less likely to be a horse there to go on. It looks like probably um, either Levitate or maybe Spars Dancer will go on there. If we look at the middle third, let's say 8 to 15, uh, in actual fact 15, Captain Cat is a non-runner, um, we can see that um, um, Bolty Boys is the confirmed front runner in the field and um, it's possible that he uh, along with Gabriel's Kaka, who could go middle or or um, high draw, depending on which way the jockey decides to go, it's possible that the middle could have um, could have the best early pace profile. So, um, what I mean by that is that the middle third, um, if they split into three, that group could lead because it's uh, the runners in that in that partition are more accustomed to a prominent position. I hope that makes sense. I probably used a lot more words than I needed to there. Um, <clears throat> and finally if we look at sort of 14 to 22 we can see we can see that there's a few here that want to get on with it as well. Again Gabriel's Kaka if he goes if he goes towards the rail then then he could tow them along along with Unsinkable and perhaps even Robert the Painter. Um, and I think um, on balance um, given the likelihood that they might split into two rather than three, um, uh, it may well be that, that High is favoured here. Um, and interestingly, Tullius, our old mate Tullius, um, has the highest draw of all. Now he is generally a hold-up horse, as we can see there, um, but the way things may pan out, he might just get a really nice toe into the race from the likes of Unsinkable. Robert the painter, and perhaps even, um, uh, perhaps even um, Bolty Boys, if if he goes middle to far. Um, so, Tullius is a horse that ticks quite a lot of boxes. He's a six-year-old now. Uh, Andrew Balding is a is a very good trainer in the in the context of a race like this. Oishi Murphy is has was noted as probably the emergent jockey of last season. Um, still claims three, which is excellent value. The one, the one slight reservation I'd have about Talius is that he he is carrying a lot of weight um, as a consequence of his very high rating. Um, uh, but as we can see, that the, the the bottom weight in the race is 93, so it's actually quite a compressed handicap this year. Um, so Talius is is certainly of interest uh, on his first run for. 129 days, which we already know um, aligns quite well with uh, plenty of other winners. Uh, in fact, 13 of the last 17 who were having a run after 121 days or more. Um, is there anything else lower down the ratings that we might be interested in? Um, let's have a quick look back at the race analysis. And again, um, we can sort by class, which is um, quite meaningful. Um, I'm looking for a horse with a slightly lower uh, race card number that, that ticks a lot of boxes um, and unfortunately there, there doesn't actually seem to be that much of interest. Sweet Lightning would have been but it looks like um, his soft ground form is not up to the rest of it. In actual fact we can look at that if we go to the full form filter um, we can we can drill down onto those three zeros that Sweet Lightning had. So we select him from the drop down there and we can say, right, show me your runs on soft ground. And we can see that um, he ran in, that looks like the Cambridgeshire there, um, where he finished mid-division back in 2010. Since then he's run close up um, in a listed race at the Curra over a mile and a quarter. And he wasn't beaten far in another listed race at Leopardstown over a mile on soft ground so he's actually he's actually running some pretty good races um, listed listed class races this is a class two so it's a drop in class um, Sweet Lightning um, as a nine year old not getting any younger but he might be interesting from a high draw um, but probably um, in truth if I if I was going to have a bet in this race and uh, and, I, <laughs> and I should say caveat M tour that the likelihood is I won't be um, Tullius would be the horse that I would side with on the basis of um, some of the trends and the pace and um, his overall performance in such races.
which we can see is is quite favourable. Okay, I just wanted to uh, give you a little insight into um, into the Gigi's race card, specifically looking at a big um, heritage handicap. I hope that's given you some food for thought, and um, I hope Tullius runs well in order to vindicate the last 20 minutes of your lives watching this video. This is Matt Bisogno saying thanks for watching and bye for now.